once again, we are in the midst of the Jesus or Muhammad Marathon. Actually, we're almost done. I think we'll be finishing up this weekend. And uh, as you can see, perhaps on your screen, we have a long way to go in the fundraiser. The fundraiser for a new channel, English channel, to not only the United States and North America, but to Europe, very important. Ho over 100 million potential households that we can reach in the English language in Europe, Northern Middle East, as well as Australia. We can't do it without your help. Please call and donate, 248-416-1300. like to recognize those who donated in the previous shows. Uh, thank you so much. Several of you donated a couple hundred dollar donations. Thank you. God bless each and every one of you. We thank Peter from Germany and others who have donated, not out of their plenty, but out of their want and necessity Amen. even. Amen. Praise God. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. And remember the two mites? Even if you got two mites, you know, just $5 or $10, that poor widow, that's all she had was two little mites, like two pennies. She gave that to the temple. Jesus said she's given more than all of those rich who have given much because they gave out of their abundance. But she gave all even, she even all that she had. Hmm. And God was more blessed by that. Amen. If you can give $5, $10, 100 whatever it is God lays on your heart, give. Not just because we need it, but pray that God would guide you. And if he's guiding you, you need to be obedient, and if he's truly guiding you to give, I have full assurance and can say to you with complete faith, if he is guiding you to give, and you give, he will bless you for giving. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That works, that, that is uh, in, in moral issues, but it's also in financial issues. Give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, good measure, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Plant your seed in a ministry that is sharing the gospel worldwide. That's what's happening here at ABN. Give us a call, 248-416-1300. Let's take a short break, and we'll be right back with Brother Osama talking about Islamic slavery. And look forward to hearing from you and your calls. God bless you. We'll be right back after this. Do you enjoy watching this live show? Would you like a copy of it on DVD so you can share it with your friends? For a small donation of just $25, you can own the requested DVD version of this live show. Please go to www.abnsat.com and go to Shop ABN. And then pick the live show you would like to order. You can also email us at abn at abnsat.com to request it. Your donation is tax deductible and your support to ABN ministry is appreciated. God bless you for your support. Welcome back to Jesus or Muhammad with Usama Daktu, Pastor Joseph, and here we are talking about Islamic slavery, three-part series uh, this evening and now tonight, and then again tomorrow evening. Right now we have a caller that's waiting patiently. Let's take that first caller of our program tonight. Welcome, you're on the air with Jesus or Muhammad. Hello, you're on the air. Hello. Yes, hello, you're on the air. Go right ahead. Yes, yes, God bless you. God bless you. Uh, I, I have a small observation yes. uh, about the historians and the information you are getting about slavery. Now, all the, all the Western historians come from a background that teaches them that truth will set you free. Mm -hmm. Now, Islamic historians come from a background that God is marker and deceiver, mm -hmm. and you can, you can lie for the defense of Islam. So that's a big, big difference of all the information that came about slavery in the West and no slavery in the, in the East because there is no historian writing about this. Yeah, 
Good point. That's, uh, that's a small observation, and thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for pointing that out. And, you know, thank you. God bless you, dear brother. Thank you for waiting patiently on the phone and sharing that. Yeah, uh, good point. Not only is it the fact that uh, now, today, in the West, uh, Muslim apologists don't want us to know about Islam's dark side, which mm -hmm. they got a lot of dark stuff to hide. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, in the back, uh, the theology, uh, to them, it wasn't a big deal. You know, during the time of slavery in America, you had people like John Quincy Adams, Thomas Jefferson, and others. But John Quincy Adams, even more than Thomas Jefferson, people, uh, and Wilberforce in England, mm -hmm. who were always against slavery based on Christianity. Yes. In Boston Harbor, uh, there was, you know, Christian uh, uh, Puritans who came over on the Mayflower yes. who opposed it from the very beginning. Absolutely. And there were slave ships that came in, and they commandeered them and freed the slaves. Mm -hmm. uh, but where did you have this in Islam? Oh, the opposite. Yeah. As anybody speak against slavery in Islam, he would be put to death. Yeah. Because that's what Allah taught. Not only in the last, uh, in the past of Islam, even today, I will show you the Mufti of Egypt, yeah. the top two people in Islam, the top two scholars in Islam who is alive today, they said, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do with Allah's word? Should I remove it with a, with a racer? Oh, so, so even today? We, we will have the video. We're going to show it to our that. people. It's yeah. going to be a... a wonderful uh, moment to see, see even Muslim scholars today, not just because it is the past, even today, they have nothing, they cannot do anything about it, because to speak against what Allah taught in the Quran, you become an infidel, you cannot compromise the word of Allah, that's what Allah said, and that's what's going to be, like it or not. And as you're going to point out later, Muhammad himself had slaves. We're going to see all And this that. becomes the Sunnah. Yes. And so if you deny that, then you're denying what the Prophet did. You're, you're, you're really destroying the whole entire religion. Yeah. The whole tradition of Islam. Yeah. Well, well, you want to go on, Brother Joseph? Let's go on. We don't have any callers right now, and you got a lot to share. Well, God is good. I'm glad we have Amen. the time, and it will be Amen. a good time. Yes, sir. Uh, continue with our slides here. Uh, a comparison between the historical perspective between the West and in Islam. Yeah. So we see uh, on the screen here together, uh, in the West... While the anti-slavery abolitionist movements in Europe and North America were led by concerned Christians, there was no similar opposition to slavery within the Muslim That's world. That's what we were just talking about. I know. I, yeah. I, the Perfect. problem is... You are rushing me. I wish I'm I can sorry. give you. If I can give you a copy of my presentation <laughs> in your laptop, then we don't have to do that. But that's fine. Sorry. <laughs> so here is comparison between uh, 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 Western, the Western who fight, mm -hmm. who die yes. to free the slave. You could not. I would love any Muslim right now call us and give me a name of a uh, or uh, give me a piece of information about somebody in the history of Islam the last uh, 1430 some year. Uh, send me uh, or give us information about somebody who fought to end slavery. Well, or, I, and, and let me point out something real quickly. Yes. I don't think they can, but even if they found somebody, he, here's a key verse. It was, it was strong Christians. It was committed Christians. Mm -hmm. It was biblically knowledgeable Christians who fought slavery. Absolutely. Why? Because as you put out in the first show, that type of slavery it's is sin. never in the Bible, not in the Old Testament, and no slavery in the New Testament whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Those people who knew the Word of God led the fight against slavery. Yeah. Now, if someone were to come up with some Muslim historical figure who said, I don't think much of slavery, Show us someone who was an orthodox Muslim. Following the teaching of Allah in the Quran and Muhammad that, in the That hadith. said we shouldn't have slavery. That's what you really That's need. That's going to be a problem. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it doesn't exist either way. He'd have to be a liberal Muslim. Well, See, that's it, the point. I mean, he, he'd then, have to be a Muslim who's not following the Then he's not a Muslim. Well, there you go. Then he's not a Muslim. There you go. Uh, continue yes. with our slide. The next one here, comparison between the West and Islam concerned with slavery. Even after Britain outlawed the slave trade in 1807 and Europe abolished the slave trade in 1815, Muslim slave traders enslaved an additional 2 million Africans. By some calculations, the number of victims of the 14 centuries of Islamic slave trade could exceed 180 million. Look at the dates. 1807, it was already judgment come, slavery is over. Yeah. Uh, 1815, 15. slavery trade was completely gone from Europe. From Europe. 
Uh, after is. that, two more, two more million slaves has been taken from Africa to Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Kuwait, Amman, and all this Muslim world as we know it up to date. Uh, huge number yeah. of African has been taken in 14 cents. When, when you say 100 million, that's a large number, but 100 million, when you, 180 million, when you break it to a 1400 year, it becomes like a steady way yeah. of having slave. I right. know the number is shocking. 180 years and 1400 years. That's the way, but that's the point we have to point to it. You, did I? Did you? Are you going to mention in your in your presentation about the African women who put the plates in their mouths? No, I, we I, have not. We have I not just want to mention that for people. Just an aside. Mm -hmm. I just learned this about a few months ago. Yes. You know the, the women who had the big lips. They they put plates in their mouths to make them stick out. Yeah. In East Africa, and then they'd put these real heavy earrings to make their ears ear longer. <laughs> you know why they did that? No, I don't. Tell me about oh, it. Oh, it's amazing. Yes. A, 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 a old Christian missionary, dear brothers, he's in his 80s now. Yeah. He went to East Africa way back, like in the 40s or 50s. Mm -hmm. Those people did that because. Once again, as you've shown in your presentation, most of the people who went to the Muslim world were women for sexual exploitation. The Arab Muslims said, we want women who are beautiful You know, an ugly one with bad ear and bad lips and bad. They deformed themselves. Man, oh man. So they would be disqualified from being taken as slaves, and that is where that practice comes from. Lord have mercy. How many people know that? I, I did not know it. I didn't know it until a few months ago, it. and I only knew it because of a Christian missionary who's in his 80s who went over there and ministered there for a long time, and he found it out firsthand. Brother, when I did, when I did my study to put this presentation together, my heart was broken, and there's so much stuff I could add to this presentation. We have 180 slides, but I can make it 300, 400, 600 slides. That would be a great thing to add if you get a picture absolutely. of that we and need, then get a historic need, reference uh, for that. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. We need to have some evidence for it historically and yeah. we'll add it by God's word. Yeah. Oh, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. People do this to themselves, that to, to be set free and will not be, will not be taken yeah. into slavery. Deform themselves so, so they won't be taken as slaves. Lord have mercy. God help us. Well, uh, let's continue, Brother Joseph, yeah. with a uh, historical perspective uh, yeah. between the West and in Islam. Yeah. <clears throat> Nearly a hundred years after President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, making slavery illegal in America, it was not until 1980 that some Muslim countries removed legalized slavery from their statutes. Today, many international organizations document that slavery still continues in some Muslim countries. Are you following this, Brother Joseph? In the statue, in the paperwork, we do not have in the Egyptian law yeah. uh, how much you can give for slave and the mm -hmm. treatment, all this. We're going to see some of these things was going to make you, shock you. It's, it's removed from the statue, but it still continues yeah. to be practiced under the table. Well, and by the way, that 1980 date for like Saudi Arabia giving up slavery, yeah. now that's not that long ago, but that was only under intense intense course, pressure course, from, United from the United Nations and the West. If it wasn't for that, they would still have it legally in their laws all over the place. Uh, brother, if I can tell you that we know of a doctor, mm -hmm. she is forced right now by her own uh, father to be married. Yeah. She cannot marry. That is slavery. It still exists. Yeah. So yeah. it's not about just... Uh, the opposite of slavery is freedom. Yeah. If you don't have freedom, you're slave. Yeah. My dear Muslim brothers and sisters, if you don't have freedom to choose what faith you follow, mm. if you want to be a Christian, you want to be a Jew, you want to be an atheist, you want to be an agnostic, mm. you want to worship some tree or some cow, if you don't have freedom to choose what faith you follow, you are slave. Mm. So it's not just being slave by being forced to uh, uh, bed by somebody or forced into working for somebody for free. Not having freedom. The greatest uh, freedom a man can have is a freedom of worship. Yeah. Freedom of uh, 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 believing in God in whatever way you choose. Well, what does Sharia do to it's, that? Yes, indeed. It's killing. So Muslims and worldwide do not have freedom in their own country, in their own in their own uh, houses, in their own mosques. You don't have freedom. If a Muslim cannot change his religion to say Christianity freely without being harmed, you are a slave to Islam. You are a slave to the uh, movement and the religion and uh, whatever we will do in your country and mm. in, in your state. Mm, 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 mm. So uh, it, it's a great difference. It's a great difference between East and the West. 
uh, and uh, the time here is unbelievable, even yeah. until 1980, and then still exists today. 